Welcome back to Open Line. We are talking about a bill in the legislature it passed four years ago. It's back up this year. Should the Bible become the official state book of Tennessee? Right now, Tennessee does not have a state book. Four years ago, this bill passed. Uh, lawmakers said the Bible should be the whole, uh, or should be the state book. And um, then Governor Haslam vetoed it, said it trivialized uh, the Bible. So now it's going to be run again. And we have with us the two sponsors of this bill in the House and Senate. We have with us Senator Mark Pody, Republican from Lebanon, Representative Jerry Sexton, Republican from Granger County. And we have several calls. We also have people on social media, and it really is split on social media. We have lots of, yes, it should. We have lots of, no, it shouldn't. We have, what about the separation of church and state, which, which you addressed, and we may get more on calls. But a lot of, um, a lot of talk on social media. Let's go to Ray. Hello, Ray. Hello. Go right ahead. Well, uh, we don't have a state book down, do we? No, we don't. So, why do we need one? Why do we need? All right, do you want me to pose that to them? <laughs> well, that's I'm just ask the that. first question. Okay, also, go ahead. The, 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 the gentleman who's uh, citing that we need to have more people uh, reading the Bible, well, uh, if he looked at News Channel 5, uh, both at the 4 and the 5 o'clock shows tonight, it gave a statistic that only one in three third graders are reading at grade level. If we're going to spend all this energy and time making Bible the state, the state book, why not, you know, actually get our children learning to read at, at grade level and stop pushing religion on them? Thank you. And I'll I'll take that. I mean, you can respond to that. His question also, I think, gets at there are a lot of big, important issues that the, uh, this state faces. Do we need to to fight this one, which is divisive? Um, you know, do we need to fight this one in the face of so many others? But his question is, why do we need one and, and then the one that I just brought up? Sure. Okay. Let me uh, just address the issue with the reading of our, our children, the grade levels that they're reading on. Uh, there's been studies done by some of our elite colleges that professors that have studied this issue say that the King James Version of the Bible would be one of the best tools for children to learn to read. That it, it's, it's poetic and it, it, it trains them in ways that just regular text does not. Uh, as far as the religious part goes, you know there was years ago back in the 1960s a, a woman named Madeleine O'Hara that thought that it was important to start a fight against religion. And so she was uh, very successful in, in causing us to get rid of prayer in school, get rid of the Bible, and the things that were important to many Americans at that time. But it happened anyway because of one woman. And so, you know, we're not trying to push this on anyone. We just want it to be available. We'd like to, to have the same freedom as anyone else to read it in school, to read it, uh, you know, on, in, in our state house. We just want the same freedom that every other text has. So now, as I hear you say that, it means this is about more than just some declaration that it's the state book. I mean, when I hear you say that, it means we want this to go into schools, we want uh, religion, you know, the Bible back in, in schools. It's, so on one level, it sounds like it's an important book, and why not make this important historical book the state book? But on another level, when I hear you say that, it sounds like you're actually going to push for much more. Is that right? Not on this level. We want, this is something that Senator Capote and myself have fought for for years. I've wanted it put back in school ever since it was taken out. Uh, but this is strictly on the economic, cultural level, and the history of our state. That's what this is about. I want people to realize, we put up signs for uh, different people around this city here to name buildings after them, streets after them, to memorialize who they were and what they did. And I believe that it's important for us to memorialize the things that have meant the most to us down through life, the Bible being one of those. And it should not be excluded because that it's religious in text. And to go back to your second question, is why, why the Bible? Um, or why do we even need a state book? 
Uh, about two weeks ago, we just passed something, and it was saying a slogan saying that um, Tennessee is a volunteer state. Nobody got upset with it, you know, and why do we need the slogan saying that Tennessee is a volunteer state? It, it's um, things that we stand for as Tennesseans, of who we are, who our DNA is, who our culture is. Uh, we want to kind of say, we think enough of our history of who we are, we're going to stand up and say that we want to recognize that. And going back, that this is something that has made uh, more of a difference and shaped us than any other book, and we want to recognize that. All right, let's go to front. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on there. Actually, all right, hold on. <laughs> let's go to Frank. Hello, Frank. Yes. Go right ahead. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I am a uh, constituent of Senator Pody, first of all, and a practicing Christian. I, uh, my biggest concern here is while a state flower or a state tree is not exclusionary, most people don't get worked up if it's the wrong tree, they might feel excluded by a state book that uh, isn't pertinent to their religion. And so I'm concerned that the one in five Tennesseans who are either not Christian or have no religious affiliation would feel excluded by this. Uh, and That's Frank, a very good point. And, and what, do you, what do you say to that? Uh, Frank, I appreciate you calling it, and thank you for, for the call. And, and you're right. So if there's other uh, books or if there's somebody else that thinks that this is important enough that they want to have that down here, I don't want to exclude them. And they're certainly welcome to come and say, you know what, here's the value of this book or here's the value of what they're looking for. And it should be brought down and, and talked about and debated and just like anything else, just like this bill is, just like this, this book is. Um, so I'm not trying to exclude those for anybody else that, that might say, I'm not, I'm not that religious belief, um, so I don't want any part of it. We're not trying to say that you have to be a religious um, belief to have this. We're just saying, let's recognize the, what this book has done. Whether you are that way, you know, that you're um, this religion or that religion, this book has actually shaped more of our state than anyone else or any other book that I know of. You don't feel like, I, so if somebody did feel excluded, you would tell them what? All right, so if they're saying, you know, I don't feel comfortable with, with that book. I would rather have this book or give me, give me that. I'm very open to saying, okay, what, what has that done? Walk me through um, the facts of how that has shaped Tennessee. How has that impacted Tennessee uh, to the extent that this has? And if they got valid points, if they've got, um, they can say, hey, this book has done whatever. Um, we need to look at that. It's going to be tough, I think, for the legislature to pass the Koran as a um, state book. I, I think it would. I would have to say, what has the Koran done to shape the history of Tennessee? Okay. And what, what, what do you think? If, what do you say to somebody that says, I, this, this excludes me, I'm not a Christian, and here the state is saying this is um, the state book? Um, what, 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 what do you say to somebody that, that would express that concern? Well, we're not living in paradise for sure, and uh, there's nothing that we can do. Uh, Senator Pody and I have two buttons that we can push when we're voting on the House floor and the Senate. One of them says yes and one of them says no, and there's no way that I'm going to be able to please everyone. I can't push both of those buttons. I can only push either a vote yay or a vote nay. So we don't live in a society where we can please everyone. Uh, we would like to, we'd love to live in paradise, but we don't. We live in a divisive area. You know, it, it's funny to me that the sports industries has made billions of dollars off of two teams coming together trying to run over the other one and people in the, cheer, in the stands cheering for them. And I think a challenge is, is we ought to debate these issues and to see whether or not that we find things that are important to us. Don't be afraid to read the Bible to see what's in there. You might find something that's wrong and show me where that, uh, you know, I should be reading something else. Let's not be afraid to include different things and see whether or not they stand up for the test of time. All right, we have to take a break. Um, hold on the line. We have David, Jimmy, Tommy, others. Hold on the line if you want to call in. There's the number 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Take a break. We'll be back right after this.